Students, in the earlier lesson we have seen how handicrafts are produced in the houses by the families using simple tools. We also saw how goods are produced on a large scale in the factories by machines and a number of workers. So, in today's lesson, let's look at how the production takes place in large factories. Wondering which factory we are going to? Students, all of us use paper in our day-to-day -day lives in some form or the other. Be it the newspaper, be it your notebooks, textbooks, art sheets, records, registers, progress reports and so on. Have you ever wondered how the paper is made? Let us now look at how the production happens in a paper mill. The paper mills are the places where paper is produced. The four paper mills in Andhra Pradesh include the paper mills in Bhadrachalam, Kurnool, Rajamundra and Sirpur Kagaznagar. Raw materials are the items that are used to produce various kinds of products. The raw materials are required in large quantities by the factories for the production process. Here's an exercise for you. Try to take any four industries and make a list of the possible raw materials used in those industries. Students, what do you think are the raw materials for the paper production? When it comes to the supply of raw materials to paper mills, the raw materials include wood from bamboo, subabul and eucalyptus trees. The subabul is the most widely used wood in the present day. In addition to the wood, various chemicals like common salt, caustic soda is also used in the making of paper. The scrap paper is also recycled in the paper mills. But students, what do you think is another important element in the paper mills? The electricity is one of the most important elements that help in running the heavy machinery factories. The electricity is generated through the power generators in the paper mills. In addition to the electricity, the paper mills also require large amount of clean water all around the year. The raw materials are procured from the forest for making paper in the mills. This is the reason why most of the paper mills are established near the forest having bamboo and other soft wood trees. But now the paper mills have started procuring wood from distant places also. Students, do you know how bamboo is procured from the forest? The paper mills procure bamboo and other raw materials from the contractors engaged by them. The tribal people were employed by the contractors a few years ago. Students, you must have learnt in class 6 how the tribes were employed to cut bamboo from the forest in the Kunavaram hills. Do you know that the excessive cutting of bamboos has led to the decline of bamboo trees in the forest? This is one of the reasons why trees like subabul is being used as an alternative for making paper. The government has also encouraged people to cultivate subabul trees. The production of paper is a continuous process in the paper mills which happens simultaneously in different stages. Now, let us see the step-by-step -step process of paper making. The subabal wood, which is an important raw material, is transported to the paper mills by lorries. The lifter cranes in the paper mill lift the logs of subabal wood and place them on an iron platform. A conveyor belt then carries the wood to the cutting machines. The paper is generally made in five stages with different machines and raw materials for each stage.
When the logs arrive at the wood yard, they are fed into a rotating drum which removes the bark. The logs are then chipped. The wood chips are transported to the pulp mill on a conveyor belt. The entire wood that a lorry can carry is cut by these machines in 30 minutes. In this space, the work goes on throughout the day. Can you imagine how many trees get cut for the functioning of a paper mill for a single day? The second stage is the making of wood pulp. This material is water. The dried up pulp is sent to the next stage through the conveyor belt. In this stage, drying pulp is pressed by rollers to make it smooth. As the pulp dries completely, a sheet of paper becomes ready which is then rolled up. This stage is followed by the cutting stage. In this stage, paper is cut according to required size in cutting machines. The paper is then made into rolls and sheets and then packed to send to godowns to be preserved. The rolls of paper are labelled with batch or lot numbers, its weight and so on. Let us see how the batch numbers help. A batch number is allotted to every of wood that is brought by the lorries. The batch is then sent to the different sections one after the other. The raw materials of each batch are processed together at each stage. What do you think this implies? Yes, it means that all the papers produced in one batch contain the same inputs and undergo the same processing and hence they will have the same quality. The batch system helps the factories in producing continuously throughout the day. In addition, it also helps the managers to trace any issues in the product just by verifying the particular batch. The paper mills run round the clock with three shifts for the workers, which are shift A, B and C. While the shift A is between 6 am to 2 pm, the shift B and shift C are between 2 pm and 8 pm and 8 pm and 6 pm respectively. The night shift workers who work between 8 pm and 6 am are given a special allowance. The shifts are on a rotation basis where the workers move from one shift to the other after a period of time. The administrative staff who looks after the management, accounts, sales and trade of the products, workers welfare etc. work in the general shift which is between 9.30 am and 5 pm. Now that the paper is produced, let us see how the paper is sold. There are marketing depots for the paper mills in different cities. With the developed railways and roadways, it is easy for the transportation of paper to the markets. In addition, paper is also exported to countries like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, Malaysia, Singapore, Nigeria and South Africa through the marketing depots.
Now let us see the kind of workers and the nature of their work in the paper mills. In a paper mill, different kinds of work are done by the different employees. While some work on machines, some work on electrical fittings, some work on assistance, some transport the materials and so on. There are highly qualified personnel like the engineers while some are while some are from industrial training institutes and polytechnic colleges. In addition to the nature of work, the employees are recruited on certain terms and conditions. While some are employed as casual workers who work when the need arises, there are the regular and permanent employees in the factory. In addition to the regular and casual workers, there are workers who are employed on a contract basis. Now let us see the various benefits that these employees get. The permanent workers have certain benefits like the provident fund, which is paid when the employee retires from service, medical insurance, compensations in times of unforeseen events, besides hike in salary every year and regular holidays one day every week, festivals and additional leaves. The healthcare facilities of the family members of the permanent employees are taken care of by the factory. Allowances are also provided for purchasing uniform cloth for washing along with bonuses when the paper mill gets benefits. The casual workers are the employees who are employed on and off depending on the requirement. The casual employees are employed for a few days in a week or a month to carry out various activities like cleaning the floors, pasting the labels on the paper packets and so on. These employees are paid on a daily basis and they do not get any facilities like the permanent workers. The contract workers on the other hand get a lower salary when compared to the permanent employees. They do not get any kind of allowances or bonus or paid holidays. These contract employees might get regularized as permanent workers after two or three years of working. On the other hand, the accountants, clerks and managers get better salaries compared to the others. In addition, the senior managers who are generally from the families of the owners are also paid high salaries beside a number of allowances, education for children, housing facilities and so on. Many a times it is seen that the casual workers are employed for regular work by the factory owners to reduce expenses. In addition, the factory owners also purchase machinery that requires very few workers to cut down on the expenses. These kinds of steps by the management attract agitations and bargaining by the workers' unions for various reasons. Students, have you ever wondered who are the owners of the paper mills? Sometimes a group of few people invest large amounts of money and borrow money from banks to set up the factories. The balance amount of money that comes after paying salaries to all the employees and other dues is shared by these people who had invested money for the setting of the factories. Some factories are owned by the governments which are run by the governments for the welfare of the people. As we have seen, the factories require large quantities of raw materials from natural resources like rivers, forests and mines are easily exhausted. Although the factories provide employment to a large number of people, the workers find it very tedious and are prone to different kinds of health problems due to the exposure to chemicals. With meager payments, the workers are forced to live in slums with minimal facilities. Therefore, the biggest challenge is to find ways to balance our needs and the effects of it on the factory system and the ways to improve the lives of workers. You must have felt a kind of stench when you pass by some of the industries or factories, isn't it? What do you think causes such kind of smell? In addition, the factories emit a lot of smoke and other materials that pollute the air, water and the soil with chemical effluents. 
the dust and the chemicals are released from the factories and industries. This is why there is a need to control the damage caused by them in the environment. With an idea to reduce pollution, the mills and factories now have an effluent treatment plant where water containing the chemicals is sent for treatment. This is how the paper mills and many other factories work with so many processes, people and raw materials. Alright students, hope you understood the chapter well. Thank you and see you again.